what we will be showing you during this video. Using the Thanksgiving number one CNC project, we will create a fall door sign. We'll also show you how to create basic tooling for that layout. For this demonstration, we'll be using VCarve Pro 8. It's important to understand that the tools that I'm going to use inside the software are also available in VCarve Desktop and Aspire. So you can use this tutorial across the board. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to create a brand new file. And this is going to be 18 by 18. And we're going to make sure that the thickness is one inch. The datum is set to the center. It's in inches, of course, and we're going to use a very high resolution. So we're going to click OK. We're going to go over to our click art, clip art tab, and we're going to go to our design and make folder. And we're going to go down and find our Thanksgiving number one project. And we're going to double click on the fall wreath. And we double click on any of our models in our uh, library, clip art library. It ends up showing up in the middle of our job space. Now, for most of the time, we are going to dynamically work with our um, models, which is just sort of size them up and scale them to fit and whatever looks nice. But in this case, because we're going to use this model for a couple other variations, then there are a couple that I need to make sure that are correct. So in this case, um, this wreath needs to be a certain size. So we're going to go ahead and go back to the drawing tab. We're going to click the set selected object size, and we're going to make this 16.5 inches. And because I have the link X and Y clicked, then the height is going to be changed in proportion to the width. I'm going to click Apply. That looks great. Let's close that down. Now we're going to go ahead and flip over to the 3D view to take a look at it there. This is our fall wreath. It looks pretty nice. Uh, all we're going to do now is just going to make sure that the shape height or the Z height is, is thick enough. So we're going to go ahead and click on that again so we can get the little blue properties um, handle. And that'll bring up our floating uh, properties dialog. And we're going to make sure that this is set to 0.6 of an inch. And again, this is one of the only, only things we're going to be sticky about in this demo because we need that to be a certain uh, shape height. And we're going to click close. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go back over to our clip art tab and we're going to double click the hammered tin texture. And when um, models come in to VCarve Pro or VCarve Desktop, they're automatically set up. That the combined mode is set to merge. If you're in Aspire, then it just depends. So you can right click on that and you can go ahead and change the combined mode. You can click on the properties handle and use the buttons across the top, which are great as well. Or you can go ahead and go back to your uh, modeling tab and click the spanner and you can change the combined mode across here. So there's all kinds of great options to use for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click it again and we're hold down the shift key and we're going to scale this up just so that it fits, fills in that space in the bottom there. That looks great. Perfect. And we're going to go ahead and that looks like a pretty reasonable texture. So we're not going to bother to change the shape height right now to that. We're going to go back to our clip art tab and we're going to double click on our, actually we're going to drag in our wheat this time. And again, we're going to dynamically just kind of position that where we want it. And what we're going to do is rotate that just slightly. Now that's merged in, don't forget. So we're going to have to add a bit of a base height to that to bring it up through the texture so it looks right. So we'll just rotate that around a little bit more. And use our cursor keys to nudge it in place. You can see where the light green is here. That's If you happen to lose a model inside of another model, just look for that light green um, discoloration. And that's your, your model floating in. That's that's the area that's merged into, in this case, the hammer tin texture. So we're going to go ahead and click the pop-up dialog here. And we're going to change the start or the shape height to be, uh, we're just going to guess at this, uh, 0.15 about. And the start height, or the base height, you want to make sure that it, it pokes out through the, the texture. So we might need to take a couple stabs at this, but we're going to go with um, 0 0.07. And press the space bar. Oh, that looks pretty good. So it's popped up through now, and that looks great. Yeah, looks good. So we're going to go ahead and look straight down on that again. 
zoom in a little bit. Now we're going to take that and we're going to mirror that across our, uh, our job. So we're going to go ahead over to our drawing tab and we're going to click on the mirror selected objects. We're going to mirror it across the horizontal, but we want to make sure that we flip about the job center and make sure that we create a mirrored copy. So we're going to go ahead and those are both turned on. So we're going to click that and we should get a second one there. Perfect. Let's close that down. We're going to back over to our clip art tab and we're going to double click on the pumpkin and that'll put our pumpkin right in the middle of our layout and we're just going to scale that up a little bit if we hold down the shift key and we use the sizing handle here it should be it'll do it um, proportionately um, and we're going to use our cursor keys to nudge it down into place where we'd like to like it to be we're going to click the properties pop-up and we're going to change this to be 0.5 0.5 and we need to bring it up so that the base height high enough so that it gets uh, so that these don't poke through the wheat doesn't poke through the pumpkin so we're just going to put in some numbers here again dynamically just kind of working through it here let's make it point um, 075 see if that gets it up there maybe a little bit more so we're going to make it point let's go with point 0.1 and that looks pretty good. You can see right there is a little bit of a spot. So let's make a 0.15 and that's perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and close that down and we'll click off that. Now, just to kind of center it all up nicely, let's go ahead and hold, select the pumpkin, hold down the shift key, select this wheat and that wheat. And we're just going to use our cursor keys and nudge it up just a little bit to make it look a little bit more full in the center there. That looks pretty decent. Now let's go ahead and bring in our ribbon. We're going to double click on that. And this is a great situation where you can see the green uh, discoloration here. That's where your ribbon is. You just can't quite see it. So we're going to scale it up. And we're going to scale it up so it doesn't peek out the edges of our wreath. And as we scaled that up, of course, the shape height scaled proportionately so it got high enough that it's shown through the wreath now. If we hold down the shift key and grab the rotation handle here, it will incrementally rotate it around so that we know that it's gone and it's, it's still nice and level. We're going to hold down, uh, we're going to click on the middle move handle and we're going to hold the shift key down and that will slide it up and down and we're going to position it where we'd like it to be. That looks pretty good. We just want to make sure that it's not peeking out through any leaves that look kind of funny. So let's just go ahead and nudge that right in there. I think is good. And let's just take a look at this side on. Now we can go ahead and give this a little bit more Z height, I think, so or Z height. We're going to go ahead and click that, click that, and we're going to make sure that that is up to 0 0.5. I'll make it 0.75. Sorry. Close. There we go. So now it looks like it's the right height. And inside of our board, seeing as we're going to use three quarters of an inch of our piece of wood um, or our material, then we're using the most that we can. Now, so the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add in some text for V carving. So let's go ahead and go to our drawing tab. We need to go ahead and tile left and right so we can see both the 2D and the 3D. We're going to make sure that we're inside the 2D view and we're going to select the text and we're going to type in welcome. So this is going to be a welcome sign for your door for the fall season. Make sure it's bold, and we're going to change this from Candera Ken, to um, P, Palantino Linotype. We're going to click Apply, and there we go. So once we hit Apply, VCarve Pro will render our text right in the center of our project. I'm going to click Close. I'm going to select the text and use our cursor keys to nudge it down into place. I'm going to hold down the shift key and we're going to use that sizing handle to size it up and we're going to position it using the cursor key so the w is kind of in the middle of our ribbon and the e is in the kind of the middle of our ribbon so somewhere's around there if we zoom in the nudges will be a little bit smaller so that's pretty good right about there and now we're going to go ahead and use the edit text and spacing select that and we can go ahead and grab this bottom green handle and we can kind of move that into place. Now, there's some things wrong with this font. You can see that the E spacing is different than the L spacing and so on. So we're just going to take a second and, and work on a little bit of that. So we're going to um, use the same gadget that we have, the same tool. And if we hold it in between some letters, if we hold down the shift key and click, it'll add a little bit of space between some of those letters. So that looks pretty good there. 
and then we're going to click off of that, or we could have hit escape, and there we have our text where we want it to be. Maybe we'll nudge it up a little bit more. That's perfect. Now, to give our our client, if we have this, or our other family member, or maybe our wife who's going to hang this on the door, a better idea of what it's going to look like. Let's look at a better rendering of this. So let's go ahead and maximize our 3D view. We're going to go up to View, and we're going to use Shadow Shade. And that'll give it a nice render. Now, the only problem with Shadow Shade uh, and this particular design is that our text is not there, so you can't see it. So really, in order to be able to show them what's going to be on the um, the ribbon, we need to do our tooling and then preview our tooling. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, also, if you're going to send this off as a photo to somebody, you can also go to view and you can hide the modeling plane so you get a nice rendering. And then you can go view, save shadow shade image, save that off as a JPEG or a PNG file, and email it off to your client. For now, we're going to put back on our modeling plane here so we can see it. We're going to go ahead and tile our views again so we can see what's going on. And let's do some tooling. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to get an outline vector of our project. So to do that, we are going to select all of the models that make up the perimeter of our project. So that includes the, the wreath. Oh, we have to press escape. The wreath and the ribbon. And we're going to go over to our modeling tab and we're going to click create a vector boundary. Then we're going to click out here so we deselect our objects. And then if we select our outline, you'll see that we have a couple object lines here that it's created. Because we use the wreath, then there's a hole in the wreath. So uh, VCAR Pro has given us the outline for the hole. And also there's a little tiny little bit over here. And we don't want to include those in our profile cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on that, ungroup, and we're going to ungroup onto original object layer. Then we're going to deselect, and we can just go ahead and select that and that and press delete. And we don't need those. And now we just have a nice perimeter outline to use. So let's just go ahead now. We're going to press F12 on the keyboard to bring up our toolpath tab here. And we're going to start off by doing our roughing pass. So we're going to rough it out. And because we didn't set up our material thickness, first of all, it's going to ask us to do that. So our material thickness is one inch. Our datum is in the center. We've jammed our relief or our layout right to the top of our board. If it was down here, you can see the top is light brown, which is not what we want. We want to have the light brown all the way to the top. That represents our layout. And the dark brown at the bottom represents the gap or the extra material in our board. In this case, we want the gap on the below our model, so that's what we're going to click, and this is all dependent on your machine, so we're going to click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and put in our parameters for our roughing pass. We're going to use an end mill, a quarter inch end mill. We're going to use our selected vector, so we need to select a vector. We're going to do an offset boundary of a quarter inch, so it's going to go outside that boundary by a quarter inch. We're going to leave behind 0 .04 uh, inches of material so that we can have something to clean off when we do our finishing pass and the rest of this is okay and we're going to hit calculate and again as always we're going to make sure that we preview our tool pass as we go because if it doesn't look right in our preview then it's not going to look right on our machine and there we go that is going to be our roughing pass looks pretty decent we're going to close that and we're going to go ahead and do our finishing pass we're going to use the 1 8 inch ball nose end mill we're going to use our selected vector it's still selected in our 2d view so that's great where it's going to be an offset, so it's going to start from the center and work its way out. And all of this, of course, is dependent on your machine. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to calculate that. It's going to take a couple minutes to calculate that. It's a pretty detailed model, so it's going to take a few minutes. Um, and we're using a small enough cutter that we're going to get a, the majority of that detail, and that's going to look pretty crisp. You could go with a higher cutter if you're concerned about the time it takes, but I'd suggest that uh, this is a good size cutter to get the detail that you want at the size that we have it at. Um, there we go, perfect. And we're gonna go ahead and preview that visible tool path and you'll see it's gonna go and it's gonna clean off that pretty good. The only place it didn't do a great job was in amongst the, the wheat stalks there, but that's because they are so small and detailed that, uh, uh, but with this amount of detail, you get a good idea of what they are. So let's close that down. And we're gonna go ahead now and do our V carving. So we're going to go to our V-Carving tab. We're going to select the welcome text. We're not going to worry about the top bit because we're going to project it onto our 3D model. 
We're going to use a 60 degree VBIF and we're going to calculate that. Let's go ahead and preview that. Looks pretty good. Now we're going to do our profile cut. Um, in this case, we are going to use this vector as our profile cut. Now this is the tricky bit. You need to keep this in mind that these two numbers added together should equal the thickness of your board. So we've used 0.75 for our actual um, layout. And we know that because I had scaled this up to 0.75. Seven, five. So the surface of this should be right at the very top of our board. And we're going to go down because the remainder of that is a quarter inch. So these two numbers added together should equal the thickness of your board. In this case, they do. We're going to use a quarter inch end mill. We're going to machine outside of our uh, of the vector. We're, going to, we're not going to add in tabs, but generally you would add in tabs. That way your project wouldn't fly out of the board when it's all done and also you know, hurt your machine and, and even worse, hurt you. Um, but in this case, we're not going to do that because we want to use this as a uh, an image to send off to our customer or to our wife or our family member. And we're going to go ahead and calculate that. We're going to preview that visible tool path and a cut right through like it should. We can double click on the waste material and there we have our finished sign for our door. And that looks pretty nice. If we maximize that, it looks really, really good. Now, again, you can you can change the inside of this to be whatever you want. If you would like to go ahead and bring back up by pressing 11, your modeling tab, we go to our clip art tab. We can go ahead and use some of the included clip art that came with your install to, to change this up a little bit. So let's get rid of the pumpkin in the middle, get rid of the wheat, Get rid of the wheat. And if we go in and we grab the um, plants and fruit, we could bring in this fruit here. And we can go ahead and use that as our middle motif for our project, which looks pretty nice in the end. Important note, if you plan to create tooling and run it on your CNC, make sure that you use values for the material setup and for the parameters of each toolpath that are safe and appropriate for your CNC machine, the tooling you have available, and whatever material you are planning to use for your project. What you saw in a nutshell. We used a Thanksgiving number one CNC project to create a layout for a fall door sign. We showed you how easy it was to add V-carving to customize the layout. We demonstrated basic tooling, and you can always add models from your clipart library to add to the variations.